Hey, what's up, everyone? Um, I'm gonna. I'm out here doing a scene that I did before um, with the creek and the buildings in the background, but this time I'm gonna focus a little bit more on the creek. Um, the last time I did this, um, I I centered the the picture around the buildings and had those be my center of interest. But this time I'm gonna use the same scene, but I want to show you how I can use emphasis to to really use a, a, a different part of the scene as the center of interest. So that's one thing I want you to be thinking about when you go out to paint is, you know, what do I want to feature in my painting and how can I arrange my painting so that that is the main center of interest and that that's what shines. So in the last one I did the buildings as the center of interest. This painting is going to be all about the creek. Um, I'm going to focus on the reflections. There's some geese running around here so we might even get a couple geese in there. Um, but uh, real quickly I'll go over my palette. I've got burnt sienna, yellow ochre, ivory black. These are my three earth tone primaries. So this is like a red, a yellow, and a blue but very toned down, low intensity, low saturation. Across the top I've got my very vibrant primaries. Cadmium red light, cadmium yellow light, ultramarine blue. Um, I usually work with my palette down, but for the videos I'm putting it up like this just so you can see my, my colors, but if you're working with a French easel you can lay your palette out on the shelf here. Um, I've got Gamsol paint thinner in my brush washer, that's a metal brush washer there, and then I've got a mixture of Gamsol and Galkit. Uh, this is two thirds Galkit painting medium to one third Gamsol thinner, and that's going to be my medium, that's what I'm going to dip into as I go to thin my colors out. Um, first thing I'm going to do is stain my canvas. I'm going to tone it and eliminate all this white and I'm going to do that with some ivory black. And now I don't want to get this too thick, I just want it to be nice and thin. And so I'll go ahead and do that. So the trick is to put it on and then wipe it back off. We don't want it to be too thick on there. We want to make sure we have plenty of medium on our paper towels we do this. And I uh, just want to wipe it back down. And this is going to eliminate the white. It's going to create a nice tone for us to work on. It really help us judge our values, how dark and how light our areas are. And um, I generally use ivory black for this. You can experiment. These are great colors to tone your canvases with because they're not going to overpower anything that you put on later. So if you want to try to make a nice toned down orange, you can do that. Um, there's no rhyme or reason to this. Um, it's just experimenting with different ones and see what you like. I really like the ivory black tone. Uh, it seems to work well for a lot of different subjects. Um, Now if you've been watching the videos, you know that we're not going to start with brushes. For these beginner videos, I want to lay in uh, my dark pattern just using the paper towel. So what you want to do is you want to grab your paper towel and you want to wad it up and create a nice surface there, a nice pad. Um, then you're going to go right into your medium. I'm going to go right in with ultramarine blue and, and uh, burnt sienna and make a nice dark. This is how I want you to start these paintings, regardless of what you're painting. I want you to try this technique because it's, um, it'll really help you uh, get over a lot of the, the tendencies when you're a beginner to focus too much on detail. And so I want you to start looking at big, dark, and light patterns. Now I've got to squint my eyes down and there's, there's not a whole lot of contrast going on here. So this is going to be a more subtle type of painting. Um, but one thing I will notice is that we've got the, 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 the reflection of the sky in the water is going to be our, one of our light areas. Um, now I don't want to introduce too much sky up into here. The, the reason is I want the horizon to be high because I want you to really focus in on the creek. So I'm probably going to leave my sky out and I'm going to start this and I can just brush in this creek bank just to kind of get an idea of where things are going to be. Just wipe it in here with the paper towel. And 
This is where you really want to be squinting down. You can see my eyes are almost closed. Squint down to your eyes are almost closed. Look through your eyelashes. This is really going to simplify your patterns. And so I'm trying to trying to decide where my darks and lights are be are going to be. I want to generalize them. I want to try to see if I can break this painting up into a big dark and a big light shape. Um, so I'm going to call my grass and uh, everything except for this building out here and the sky my dark. So just for just to try to um, visualize my big pattern, I'm just going to lay all this in with my dark wash here. Burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. And there's a little clump of grass right here in the creek that comes up. If you want to get smaller, you can use your finger to push into that, to that paper towel. And uh, give you a little bit of um, ability to do a little bit more of a delicate shape. This is my distant hill back here. Like I said, I'm really eliminating the, the sky from this picture. So right here we have some buildings. I'm gonna leave them light. Um, and I wanna make sure that I can capture that reflection of that building in the water. So I wanna make sure that I've got it lined up right here so that the reflection will show right here. Um, and I can go ahead and get this dark in here. That's going to be the roof of the building. There's the shadowed side of the reflection of the building. I'm going to come up here and echo that shape. So you can see I'm already starting to develop my big shapes. Give you an idea of the reflection of the, the reflection in the building. That's it. I just want some big generalized shapes. It's just, we're working with abstract shapes at this point. We want them to relate to what's going on in the actual subject matter, but we don't want to get too caught up with making it perfect at this point. We just want to see our big shapes. So you see I already got this nice um, indication of this, sh this zigzag shape. So I love those S type of compositions. So if, if we can, we probably want something over here to direct your eye back this way and this could just be a dark shape at this point it doesn't really have to be anything specific we can come back and accentuate it later it could be the hillside or whatever but uh, I want that angle in there to kind of create that S shape so see I'm thinking more about shapes than I am about what's actually out there and that's important now when every time I'm working on this building I want to make sure that I'm keeping it where I need it to be so that it, the reflection makes sense down here. It's easy to get kind of tunnel vision and you start looking at the building you're working on and pretty soon you forget where it's supposed to be and you'll have your building over here and your reflection over here. So try to look at the whole picture as you go. The next step is going to be our darker darks. So to do these we're going to go back in with the same mixture but a little less medium on the paper towel this time. And uh, create a nice dark with that burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. Now I want to squint down and see if I can pick out some areas that are darker than my general darks. So that's going to be little um, shadowed areas along the bank here. There's some little clumps of grass. There's a nice um, clump of lilies or something right here. And then their reflection. And as the bank comes forward there's some dark areas right in here. There's some darks right in here that are going to help pull this area forward. And here's where you can do just a little bit of drawing with these darker darks. You can use them to accentuate your shapes, but again we're not going to get too carried away. 
there's some posts over here, the roof line that comes out like that. I'm going to go ahead and lay in that shadowed side of the building there. All right, so this is sort of our center of interest here, this water with the reflection. Um, you know, I really want that to be sort of the main part of this painting, so we're going to be keeping that in mind the whole time. Um, now, when you have a reflection, here's something I want you to think about. Your darks are going to be slightly lighter, and your lights are going to be slightly darker. So what happens in a reflection is your values become closer together. Um, if you think of a if you think of your values as uh, like in a range from 1 to 10, with 10 being the brightest and 1 being the darkest, um, in a reflection you're only going to be working with values that are like between, you know, maybe 3 and 7. So you bracket those values together so you're not going to have an extremely light or an extremely dark value in your reflection. Uh, and that's generally true for, for all reflections. Lights will get darker, and darks will get a little lighter. Alright, now before we get too carried away with darker darks, I want to go in with uh, some big broad colors. So here's where we do the local colors. And I'm working with a toned down palette, so I'm going to make a green that's a very toned down green just using my yellow ochre and ivory black. That's why I call this a blue. For my toned down primaries, this is more of a blue. There's a, you know, when you can mix yellow and black and you get a green, that's indicating that this has a bluish tone to it. This darker green is really right near the banks. So I want to focus this toned down green sort of around the bank here. And right in the reflection here, there's some of that toned down green too. And now I want to go ahead and, and add some saturation to the color. So I'm going to go ahead and mix a nice bright green using the ultramarine blue and the cad yellow light. I'm going to mix that right into my dollar green. So I'm stepping it up. You see, I didn't go right to a vibrant green. I just I mixed my vibrant green and then I added it to my doll green. And you want to kind of do this quickly. You know, you don't want to be hesitant. Decide where you need the color and then put it in there. Let the energy of your of your strokes create some energy in the painting. So you can see that because I'm focusing on the big shapes, I'm already starting to uh, create some representation here. You can already start to see what the final painting is going to, what the final design is going to look like, and that's good because if there's anything that I need to change, I want to do it early on. I don't want to wait till later and then have to make a big change in my composition. So I can already start to tell that things are working well here and that I like the way that the composition zigzagging your eye through there. Um, now there's there's some uh, there's a there's a green on this roof line for this building but it's very blue. It's a bluish green and it's toned down so I'm gonna add some black and ultramarine blue to this green here get my green back a little bit with that yellow more ultramarine blue and then some white and we'll get this nice kind of a grayish green for the roof line here of this building and that has a sort of a double roof line on it but I'm gonna simplify it for the sake of the painting and just make it a simple roof here uh, remember it's not about the subject matter ultimately it's about the painting When I squint down, that's actually a little lighter value than I've made it. So I want to go ahead and, and adjust that before I get too far into the painting. 
because I want to make sure my values are right. How dark and how light is something. So there's a lot of light being reflected from the sky off of this roof. It's a metal roof, so there's a light blue. So I can go right in over top of my green and get that light blue in there. And you can see there it just created some more light there. Um, same thing with right here. Okay. Now if your paper towel starts to get a little bit too dirty, don't be afraid to grab a new paper towel. And the water, um, the water is very close in color. There's not a lot of color in there. There's like a there's like a slight purple, purplish brown to it. So how, how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to start with the, with the warmer, the brown color. Ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. So more burnt sienna this time than ultramarine blue. Just a little bit of the blue uh, to tone down that brown. But I want to keep it light. So if I get if I get this too dark, it's not going to look like the water. And there's more of that brownish tone as the water comes forward because what's happening is you're actually starting to see through the water and you're seeing the the bank um, the dirt on the creek bed. Okay, now I'm going to come back with my, my purple color that I see. And like I said, you, you want to look, keep your eyes moving around because what will happen is you'll see a color and then the longer that you stare at that color, the duller it's going to get because the cones in your eyes actually adjust to it. Um, so you're going to see the most vibrant colors when you first look at something. So that's why it's important to keep your eyes moving around when you want to see color. So when I glance down at this, I'm seeing a nice purple. The trick here, and I'm using this ultramarine blue and cadmium red light to create this purple, but the trick here is I don't want it to be a dark purple. I want it to be the same value, uh, very close in value to what I, that brown I just put down. And that's going to create vibration. So you can see this here. And real fast. So I'm just laying it in quickly. Now I'm not going to go over my house because that's where I need that reflection. So I'm aware of that. Um, that moves back into there. And I want to come back with my dark. But I don't want it to be too dark, so I'm going to add a little bit of white to it. I hope you can hear me over that uh, mower. As soon as I set up the camera, they got out their lawnmower and started mowing, so that's just how it goes sometimes. There's some reflections of some trees in this water. They're kind of scattered up because of the, the movement of the water is kind of making them ripple a little bit. So it's just going to be some suggestions of some tones in there. Not a whole lot, just, just a little bit here and there. Pour now more medium. Make sure if you start running out of a color or you run out of your medium that you, that you pour out more or you squeeze out some more paint. You want to make sure there's plenty of paint out on your, on your palette. It takes a lot of paint. Another thing I want to mention is my white paint, I actually mix it up. Um, I, I use a little bit of my medium in the white paint and I whip it up before I start painting. This softens the paint 
makes it a lot easier to mix the color into it as I go. I want to focus on these little clumps of, uh, of grass near the edge of the, the creek because they really they really define this this area where the creek and the water meet. And there are more there's a more of a bluish green, so you can see I've mixed my green, but I'm leaning more towards the ultramarine blue here. and I'm gonna lighten it just a little bit for the reflection. So you see how that starts to suggest that there's a reflection there, because it's dark, slightly lighter. All right, so I'm gonna to have to make some decisions now about what's going on back here. I don't want to let it get too developed down here without addressing what I'm doing back here. So there's a really nice purple hillside back there, and it's this nice light purple, and that's gonna look good because it'll it'll echo the purple that we used in the water. So using the cadmium red light and the ultramarine blue and white, making this nice purple. Now remember what I said about I really want this angle here, so I have to decide, okay, well what's going to make that angle? And one thing I see back there is a nice field. It's way back there, and it's just a suggestion, but there is a nice green field. So if I go ahead and lay in my purple, And I want to mix a nice light green color. I'm using the cadmium yellow light here, but I'm adding enough white to it that it's going to cool it off and tone it down so it's not very, um, we don't want it too hot. Too much yellow is going to pull it forward. So we want this nice, cool, light green field back here down just, again just to create a shape so this is not our center of interest we're not really too concerned about describing exactly what's going on over there um, I'll come back with my purple I suggest some of these trees where they come up in front of that And there's just a hint of a shadow on this building. The sun's just kind of peeking out. So it makes a nice purple color. Don't want it too dark. About like that right there. I want to uh, go ahead and, and pop in this reflection of this roof. 
nice green color here. And the, re the reflection is a lot softer, so there's going to be less hard edges. I'm going to come back and echo some of that color up in here. I want to go ahead and put in this um, light gray color because even though it's close to what the tone is, I want some paint on there. I'm going to take my white and I'm going to go into this purple, make a nice, like a pinkish color, and then I'm going to grab a little ivory black, get a nice warm gray, and just real quick put it in there. And for the shadowed side of the building, I'm going to take this purple. I want to go ahead and put it in there. There's a little bit of a green to it, sort of a greenish purple. And that's why I wear gloves, too. You want to keep this paint off of you. Some of the cadmiums are, uh, can be absorbed by your skin. You don't want that, especially if you're painting a lot. Um, that, that could be problematic. So wear gloves and then you can get in there and manipulate the paint with your fingers too. Do a little bit of finger painting which is always fun. And there's some buildings over here on the left but I don't want to get too involved with them so I'm just going to suggest some, some shapes here. And you'll see that it starts to suggest buildings without me having to get in there and actually draw anything too specific. So just some indications of something going on over there. And now I want to really draw your eye into this area here. So I want to pick out some vibrant greens. Um, there's some real nice vibrant greens that are right around the, the, the creek bank there. So I'm going to go in with my yellow and then ultramarine blue and make a nice vibrant green color. And go ahead and, and lay them in with the paper towel right along the bank. That's a little bit too much yellow right in there. Come back right over top of it and just tone it down a little bit. And see how not only is the color becoming more vibrant, but there's actually more texture to this paint now. So it's starting to to accentuate the area through um, through paint quality too. And if you get if you get frustrated with these paper towels at first, that's absolutely normal. Part of the reason I want you to use these paper towels in the beginning is to avoid the tendency to do too much detail at first. And um, so you really have to embrace uh, sort of letting the paint. Ha do its thing on the canvas with, without, you know, you have to kind of relinquish some control, and that's good. I'm going to do this distant field. It's got a little bit more of that blue and white in it. So you can see I'm coming right back in to this bluish green and uh, lightening up my, my, my vibrant green and cooling it down a little bit. And then once I get the color I want, I just want to put it in there. There's a real nice rich green too that's right at the at the base of the building. See 
little bit more yellow. Don't be afraid to test out your color and see if you need to sh change it. You can remix it. Put it right in there. Okay. So we did our darks. We did our darker darks. And we did our general uh, colors, our local colors. And um, we did our light area here. We got our shapes. Now we want to pull out the paintbrushes. And I want you to try to stick with the large um, flat brushes. So I'm not using anything smaller than like a four or a six. This is a good time too to squeeze out more paint. If you see like you're running out of a color, that'd be a good time to, to take a break and squeeze out a little bit more paint. See if you can find these uh, 200 milliliter tubes or 150 milliliter tubes of paint. It'll save you a lot of money in the long run. The last thing you want is to be too concerned about um, saving paint when you're when you're going to paint a painting because you'll you'll always be thinking, uh oh, I don't want to use too much paint. But in in reality, it takes a lot of paint to make a painting. So. Now the area that I want to go into first is going to be my center of interest because like I said we can we can actually build up um, detail around the center of interest and let the rest uh, stay abstract. That's going to help draw your eye to that area. So there's all different ways of bringing your eye to the center of interest. More vibrant colors, contrast, um, sharper edges. See here along the roof line, we've got slightly sharper edges and you'll see me accentuate some of those lines as we go in. And, um, and uh, thicker paint, and then we'll come back here. I'm gonna go right in, I'm on yellow ochre. Ivory black, I'm gonna make a nice green color, sort of dark, and I'm gonna hit the underside of this, the eave of the roof. back and just give it just a little bit of a, a wiggle in the brush stroke. And it's because in the reflection everything's just a little uh, broken up. And now I want to come back and, and so I'm going to work from reflection and then I'm going to work on the, the building. Reflection, building. So that everything I'm doing down here relates to what's going on up here. The reason that's warm uh, is because it's got this green light bouncing off of the grass up into that eave. So you get that nice dark warm color there. And there's a door on that building. You can't see it really because it's almost the same color as the siding. But for the sake of, um, of being sort of bringing some attention to this area, I want to go ahead and, and lay in a dark area here to suggest that door. And then I want to come down and do the same thing with the reflection. Before I do that, I want to add a little bit of a dark gray, though, in the reflection. Remember what I said about lights getting slightly darker in the reflection. So here we have a light. I'm going to come down here. It's going to be slightly darker, so I need to make that darker. That's probably more of what I'm looking for right there. And then I want to take this this dark door and reflect it down in the water too, but it's not going to be quite as dark as it is up there. And it's going to be a little wiggly. So. 
Now there's some nice little um, flowers right along the edge of the building. I want to go ahead and pop them in. Some nice little dark um, highlights there. And I'm going to go ahead and go back into the bank here and do some, some details. Just suggesting some stuff though. Nice reddish purple. And then that's reflected into the water. So again, I'm working with the real thing and then I'm coming back and I'm brushing in the reflection. Well, let's do that again. I'm gonna do a, a clump of grass here. And then I'm going to lighten that color just a little bit and come down and do the reflection. And same thing right here, there's a nice dark blue clump of flowers. And they have some light bluish green right on top. So I can lay that in and I can come back with the dark and work back into it. And shape it up a little bit. And then there's the reflection, which is slightly warmer because like I said, we're actually seeing through. It's warmer and lighter. We're seeing through to the bank there. So there's some of that red dirt coming through. Now when the opportunity presents itself, be sure you, you, you're able to ready to, you're ready to, to grab something. Like these geese are starting to swim in to the view down there. I want to pop them in real quick. Here they come. Uh, mix up a nice brownish color. their bodies. A little bit of the black for their heads. And they've got that nice light color on their breast. And then everything is reflected down in the water too the same way, so. Some nice ripples that they're making right along where they're swimming. So I'm going to take a nice light and come right back in around them. Just kind of breaking up the water a little bit. And if I want to reshape them, I can come back with the color of the water and I can cut back into them to shape them up a little bit.
come back and shape up my drawing a little bit here. See, there's actually a lot of stuff going on back there behind this. For the reason, for the purpose of simplification, I'm not going to try to mess with that. I'm just going to bring that purple color back through there. And there's some light green trees. That's too bright, so I'm going to add some yellow ochre to tone it down. Just a quick suggestion here. Same thing with the other side of the building. I'm just going to bring in that purple. And then there's just some little hints of things over here, but again, I don't want to get too carried away. There's some nice things that are happening along the foreground here with these grasses that are sticking up. So see how I'm holding my brush? Not holding it like a pencil. I'm holding it back near the end of the brush. I'm using that leverage. Now let me show you something, I just noticed, I don't like this. See how this shape right here it repeats the shape and they're right in line? I don't like that. So what can I do about it? I can mix up a nice purple. Real nice and thick on the brush. I'm going to come right back over top of that. Now the trick to doing this is making sure you have enough medium on your brush. You really want that paint to glide over top of that other paint. Um, and then you want a lot of paint on your brush and then you want to put it down and leave it alone. So make sure you have the right color to do it before you get going. And then just real quick. Get some of that brown in there. See that comes up in there like that. Okay, so so I do want that grass in there, but it might be better to move it over here so that it stops your eye from sliding off the canvas. So if I go back now with my green color that I was using, different brush. I put in that shape, but I put it in over here. And that's nice, because it blocks your eye of this corner and it moves your eye around the composition. I want to come back to this field here. I want to move your eye up from this, up into here. How else can we move your eye up? What if we had some bright pink? Now they're not out there right now, but you know the, the, the flowering trees, the, there's um, dogwoods and some uh, redbud trees, so you know they're starting to bloom right now. 
I don't see any out there, but I can use my knowledge of them and just make some up. So I'm just going to add a little bit of red here. And then I'm going to put a little bit of red up in here. And you see how that pulls your eye over. And then watch how when I just, if I just echo a little bit of that color over there, then your eye can move on across. And let's do this. Let's take an orangish red. So I'm going to add a little bit of orange to that. Dull it down with a little bit of green. And let's put that over here. And now watch. We'll take that same color and we'll put it in over here. So what am I doing here? Am I painting things that are actually out there? Not necessarily. I'm more concerned about moving your eye around the composition. So your eye comes up here, hits this pink color, jumps over here, and then it comes down here to this warm color here, and then it just moves on across. I want to create some nice color right in here. So this is a big broad area. I want to break it up a little bit, but not too much, but I want to just add some ripples, and I can do that with this nice blue color that's just slightly darker than the, the color of the sky. bring out some of this green again up under the eave this time on the, the face the, the the side of the building that's facing us right under here so now we're getting down to the to the towards the end of the painting things slow down so like I said with these beginner demos I'm purposefully not taking them too far I'm staying in the beginning stages of paint of the painting uh, I don't want you to get too confused about um, how to finish a painting. I'll talk about that more in my advanced classes. But right now, I just want you to get in the habit of thinking about orchestrating these big shapes. So I want to echo some of this light color over here where the creek continues. And that's going to pull your eye around there. So everything I'm doing is working to pull your eye throughout the composition. Now I want to pull this area forward a little bit, so how can we do that? Well, we could add some darks. I'm going to go into my ultramarine blue and black and burnt sienna, create some nice dark colors here. And you got to be careful when you have this dark color on your brush. You don't want to go too crazy with it. Just a little bit there. Um, we can even create a nice dark purple. And a little bit here. And there's some little um, there's some little posts uh, little where they've planted some trees and I'm gonna use those and, and just sort of make them look more like fence posts. I like those posts over here. So let's see if we can do this. We have a post right here. Post right there. Now, slightly lighter. And see how this is angled this way, so the reflection is going to angle the opposite direction. This one's going to come straight down. Now, see what that does? It creates a visual bridge for your eye to come up here and go around there. And it also, is, it also gives us more of a feeling of the water because we see those nice reflections. Now watch how the reflection skips the ripples here. So we've got it here, it skips, and then it comes right there, it comes right here, it comes right there. So see what, see what that's doing? It's breaking up that reflection. That's creating a nice sense of movement in the water because you feel that there's ripples there. Um, Alright, so... Now here's where you start to, it's like a balancing act. I feel like I need something over here, so I'm gonna, boom, a post over there. I wanna get into a little bit of drawing, not a whole lot, but right here there's a, there's a, this is where it helps to have some medium on your brush. Let that paint really flow off of the brush. There's this little area over here. I'm 
gonna take the back of the brush. And just scrape in some lines there. We do the same thing right here. See that? back and shape that up a little. Nice vibrant green. At this stage, you want to be putting a lot of paint on your brush. Go ahead and use that thick paint for this last stage. anything except brush strokes of color. I've been painting before and people say, well, what's that? And I'll say, I don't know, it's a brush stroke of color. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm not trying to be smart or anything. I'm just trying to make a point that you don't have to, um, you know, everything that you put on your canvas doesn't have to be something that's out there. It could just be something that you need to make the canvas more appealing visually. Now the last thing that I want to do is I want to um, squeeze out some more yellow and I really want to pop in some yellow flowers because there's these nice yellow flowers. There's not a lot of them yet, but to me they really, they really speak volumes about this time of year. This is a bright yellow and I'm using just a little bit of cad red light in there. So this is going to be a nice vibrant color. It's going to draw your eye up here around the center of interest. Right on the bank. Now a couple of these look good, but I don't want to overdo it. Just enough to kind of move your eye across the bank there. In fact, that might be too much. Right down here. I like that a little better. Now I think I want to bring in just a little bit of... People say, why do you leave paint on your on your palette well because it doesn't always dry all the way 
and then you can use it in the future. So I'm, I'm breaking up this blob of paint. This is an old blob of paint here. Inside is some nice, still fresh, you know, wet paint. So I can use it to make a color instead of squeezing out more paint. I suggest just a little bit of the sky up there. Not a lot, but just a tiny bit. So like I said, it's like a balancing act at this stage. You want to try to get your shapes balanced. Um, I don't want a bunch of lights on this side and no, no lights on this side. I want to try to have balance. So pull your eye up in here. Take your time. Step back at this stage too. Don't forget to step back from your work. Sometimes you can step all the way back 10, 15 feet. Getting close now. Don't want to overwork it. Just a little bit of like grass out there. And it wasn't very long after that moment that I realized that I should always make sure that my battery is fully charged on my camera before I go out to do a demo. So uh, I didn't really take the, the painting too much further, the, the video um, cut out there, but I was almost finished anyway. So uh, I just want to thank everybody again for watching. I appreciate it. Um, thanks for uh, all the likes and comments on the videos and uh, all the new subscribers. Welcome aboard. It's a, an honor to be able to share this information with you and it really brings me joy that you all are learning from the videos and if you have any questions you can put them in the, in the um, comments below and I'll try to get back to them and answer them. Um, and uh, you can always email me photographs of your paintings. I love seeing what people are up to after watching the video. So if you want to email me, kyle.buckland at gmail.com. Check out the links in the description. One is my fine art website where I've got uh, this demo along with the others available for purchase. Uh, and then the other one is a Patreon page where you can go on and check out. Um, if you want to become a patron of the channel, you can go on there and learn about that. So thanks so much for watching. Uh, have fun getting out there and painting. Um, remember to enjoy yourself and don't get discouraged if you're not seeing results right away. There's a learning curve to painting, especially when you're painting outside and um, it takes the bad paintings to get to the good ones. So you're never wasting time or, or paint or anything. So um, get out there and enjoy yourself and um, I'll see you next week with another beginner demo. So thanks so much for watching.